It was a delicate, closely watched speech for Emmanuel Macron in the conflict-ridden Democratic Republic of Congo. M23 rebels have captured swathes of territory in the country since re-emerging from dormancy. Speaking alongside Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi at the presidential palace, security was in the spotlight. The insurgency has cratered relations between the DRC and its smaller neighbor, Rwanda, which Kinshasa accuses of supporting the M23. Independent UN experts, other Western countries like the U.S. and France agree with Kinshasa's assessment, but Rwanda denying the charge. Here's Macron speaking earlier. Tous. All sides express clear support for the ceasefire scheduled on Tuesday. M23 representatives who went to see President Lorenzo are also committed to this. We'll now see whether each side is true to their word. But what gives me the most reason to be optimistic is that all those I have spoken to adhere to this plan. So optimism from the French president lauding Tuesday's ceasefire. For more, let's speak to Alex Vines, head of the Africa program at Chatham House. Thank you for speaking to France 24. Um, your assessment on Emmanuel Macron's first visit to the Democratic Republic of Congo, what, what grade would you give him for this visit? Oh, I think it's been a successful trip. Uh, there were some protests, including outside the French embassy of of people brandishing, including Russian flags, but I think that they were probably rent a cow crowd. They were being provocative. Uh, it's really important that Macron has been very clear about Eastern Congo. This is the most important issue on the plate at the moment for for the DRC president Teshikedi. Uh, I myself, when he was in London, met with Teshikedi, and and that was his primary issue of conversation with me, which was how to. Uh, get the Rwandese to to, to uh, back off their support of M23, which, as you've said, uh, has also been documented by an independent UN panel and other uh, other organizations and groups. Yeah, and one of the ways that some people think that Rwanda might back off is with sanctions. 150 NGOs ahead of Macron's speech wanted him to call for sanctions. Macron saying that's not on the table for now. Do you think it should be? Well, I think talk about sanctions is 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 uh, sometimes the most uh, effective way of, of of sanctions actually having an effect. So the threat is maybe m more effective than actually the implementation of them. Look, Kigali is under a lot of pressure at the moment. Uh, there is obviously also an East African community uh, deployment into Eastern Congo, which includes the the the, the, the Kenyans. So, um, Mr. Kagame is, uh, you know, is under enormous pressure at the moment, and uh, the president of France making this statement in Kinshasa will be putting on even more pressure. I'm curious how, if any French president, can 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 handle this sort of tricky balancing act, because in some ways they want to rely on the influence they had from colonial ties, but the same way separate themselves from the past. Uh, if he does too much, he's interventionist. If he doesn't do enough, then he's being negligent. What's the right balance for the French president? Well, I mean, if you look at the totality of this trip, each country's been, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, chosen for specific reasons. DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, isn't a former French colony. Uh, neither is Belgium, for that matter. Uh, well, neither is uh, Rwanda, for that matter. They're former Be Belgian colonies. Uh, and so it's a slightly different uh, discourse and approach from, for example, the visits to Gabon and to Congo Brazzaville, uh, which uh, were originally colonized by France. So um, uh, I think on the whole, uh, Macron has handled this trip pretty well. Uh, a country like uh, Angola um, has uh, opened up uh, new opportunities for trade and investment by both countries. And remember that Angola has also applied to join the Francophonie. So it's kind of expansion of the Francophone world and family. So um, uh, th this has, I think, been an important trip uh, by uh, Macron, also indicating that he is reconfigurating the, 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 the French relationship with Africa moving uh, very much away from France Afrique. Um, I'm just back from Africa, uh, and the big question uh, by Africans that I was speaking to, I've just been in Nigeria, 
was, well, we need to see the evidence now. Let's make sure that for this time round, it's not just window dressing, but that France is really trying to uh, have a true partnership with Africans and not a neo-patrimonial, neo-colonial one. Yeah. And as you point out, uh, some of these countries on this current itinerary were not French colonies. Part of that reason also because maybe anti-French sentiment rising in former French colonies. Uh, Nigeria, you mentioned, um, it just had an election. There's a lot of questions about um, how France looks to maybe uh, non-Francophone countries with economic ties and that. Uh, I'm curious, with disinformation, with rising French anti-sentiment in some places, while you were in Africa, do the people believe some of the disinformation that's been circulating, or are they aware that it might be, uh, they might be trying to be uh, manipulated by, by other governments? So it depends. I mean, my trip that I've just finished was uh, Ethiopia, then it was Nigeria for the elections that you've mentioned. Uh, and um, some of the disinformation definitely sticks. There is a sense that France has really goofed up, messed up in the Sahel. Uh, and that France Afrique uh, uh, w w was very, very counterproductive and needs to be changed. So there's definitely that. And, uh, you know, I ha have had people telling me things that are clearly propaganda that have uh, ha has been spread that are not any relationship to reality. Um, but if you go to a country like Angola, um, the Angolans want to diversify their international relations and they want more France, maybe less China. Um, uh, um, and so they want, um, you know, multipolarity, basically. Uh, and that's where I think the, the first visit by a French president, uh, by Macron to, to, to Angola, was so important, uh, because it was also that France is offering uh, assistance on water and agriculture and helping Angola diversify its economy away from over-reliance and dependence on production of oil, hydrocarbons. Uh, very illuminating, Alex. Thank you for your time. Uh, Alex Fines of Chatham House speaking to us. Thank you very much.